Yo, rolling. All right, Derek. Well, welcome to politics, <laughs> Derek. Welcome to Mayor's Monday. Uh, been trying to get a hold of you for a couple of weeks, but we finally made contact. And so first off, congratulations on the election win up there in Merrill. Uh, now that you've had a month or so in office, do you feel like you're filling it out pretty well, nicely? Yeah, I, I would like to uh, jump into things a little faster, but I know I should listen and learn a little more before I, I go a little too hard. I don't want to get into get in over my head. Um, I've always been the type of person to slowly wade into the water instead of just cannonballing in. So mm -hmm. uh, still kind of feeling things out. But you've got a, I'm sure you've got a good staff at the uh, at the office that's really helping you make the transition easier. Definitely. So that. Um, it, I can list names, but everyone. Yeah. Go on the city website, go to the directory. Everyone involved is, they're great. Yeah, absolutely. And when you've got a great team around you like that, you've really just got to point them in one direction and say, and say, hey, let's go. And, and you've, you've been doing some talking already here in your first month, just even talking with employers in Merrill. And I know you and I just talking here, it's a job crisis right now in this region. And you've got some, you've got some pretty bold ideas that could, that could help that. Yes. Um, so one of the things I keep running into is we have a lot of business incentives uh, property-wise to bring businesses in, but where the businesses are really struggling right now is employee retention because the unemployment rate is so low. Um, it, the, it's definitely an employee's market where if you don't like your job, you can jump ship. And that, that leaves employers kind of wondering why like, why aren't I retaining my employees? Um, what can I do better? So I think it's important for the city government to provide some sort of service. Um, one, to connect employees with businesses. Uh, maybe that's a, a resume bank. Um, and it, connecting the businesses to employees. Like, there should be a central hub. If I'm looking for a job, I should be able to find every business in Merrill and what they have to offer. And then um, going back to my original point about just providing a service that <laughs> eases the communication between the two, um, working in HR at Merrill Steel, I sh <laughs> there's a, a complaint, there, there's a problem with, um, it, it usually gets blamed on millennials, young people, but I think it's across all age groups. There's a ten tendency to start the job and then quit. And it, the company is really interested in finding out why that person quit, but how do you get them to, to you know, answer back? They don't want to call or they don't want to answer the phone call from the company they just quit from. Um, so if we can develop a way to kind of maybe if you quit and you're incentivized in some way to say why, so that we can help the employers know this is this is what the the problem is because the turnover rate seems high across the board right now. And, and you mentioned it, it's especially for, you know, me being 31 years old, it feels weird for me to say the younger generation, but it's, it's the kids that are kind of in your age group for lack of a better term, because nowadays people don't want to move somewhere because there's a job. They want to move somewhere because it's a good place to live and then they'll find something or they'll telecommute or work from home or things like that. There's mm -hmm. not a whole lot of moving somewhere because that's where the job is anymore. And it, I agree with you. I'm, mm -hmm. I've had um, other people disagree with a, a, mm -hmm. our shared opinion. Um, they think that the jobs are what's important to bring the young people in. I, I think it has to be a two prong approach. We have to, be providing a great place to live. Um, I, I won't go on a tangent yet, but I'd like to okay. talk about walkability in a sure. little bit. Um, and then it, it, a great place to live, and there needs to be jobs there. Um, I think the two go hand in hand. If you have a great place to live, you got to think there's plenty of restaurants to go to. Well, that's jobs. Um, it, it's a big issue. I, I'm really hoping, um, my current vision is to create a database of sorts where you can put your res upload your resume and the businesses can so sort it by criteria. Like I'm looking for someone with a background in X 
they can type that in and get a list of people living in Merrill that have those skills. Um, and the database would also have the employers. So if I'm interested in metalworking, I can type that in and get a list of all the metalworking providers or um, employers. I, I, I see a need and um, really I think I, the vision is doable. I have a background in database and UI design. Um, I, I think the main thing holding us back right now is I need the team to mm -hmm. implement this thing, but Merrill has great people. It, we got a lot of smart people up there. I think it, that part's going to be easy, and then it'll be getting people to use the service. Yeah, I think we'll just snowball. Absolutely. Yeah. Once once somebody sees it's working, then it, it doesn't take very long before somebody else will will jump on board. You mentioned walkability in there, and that's uh, kind of goes hand in hand with one of the other things that you campaigned on, which was making Merrill a Frisbee or disc golf capital here regionally, maybe, maybe nationally, but it's little recreational things like that or having the ability to walk to work or bike to work. That really does a lot to attract people to an area. Definitely. Talk um, about that a little bit. I think the best way to describe it is, because it, it, we don't really see it up here, but if you go to a college town, like go down to Madison and just stand in the street, you can feel it it's alive there's people just doing all sorts of things whether it's biking shopping like there's an energy in the air and you walk down the streets up in this area of, of the state and it, it, the energy is not at that same level so i think to make Merrill more marketable we have to start building up the infrastructure to make to get people outside um disc golf the most expensive part is usually the land, and Merrill's the city of parks. We have plenty of open space. Um, so that small investment, I believe, of putting the baskets in, they're usually about 300 bucks a piece for a nice one. I, I think that would do a lot of good just to get people outside, um, get them seeing each other. Like I've met people on the disc golf course. It's a great way to just run into community members. Um, Aside from uh, disc golf, I, I've been doing a lot of research into what makes a walkable city, and it, a lot of it's geared towards the larger metropolitan areas, but I think the study, the findings from the studies are still relevant. Um, you need a reason to get outside, whether that's you got to go to the store, you know. Um, it, it, the walk needs to be safe, like well-lit, um, you need to assure you're not going to get hit by a car. Uh, it needs to be comfortable. There should be benches and stuff where if you got to take a seat, see it's hot, you're tired, shade, comfort. Um, and then it needs to be interesting. And that's the, the main thing I think we, sh we need to focus on in Merrill for um, short-term marketability. A lot of cities, going back 5,000 years, cities have statues. You know, history, mm -hmm. meaning, art on display. Um, it's down right now. Merrill had a, a statue called the River Rat. It's like a logger. Um, he's being repaired at the moment. And as far as I drive through the city all the time, unless there's some statue hidden away, I don't think Merrill has a single statue up right now. Mm -hmm. That's odd to me. Like the Statues and cities go hand in hand. It, we need to put those things in. It, it, just, just to make it interesting, you know? Um, I want something that I can walk by and read a little plaque and feel like I'm, I'm part of a community and a history. Um, yeah, you walk by something like that and you say, that's Merrill. That's, exactly. that's what we are. Yeah. And um, so it just more involvement of the arts in the feel of the community. Um, I haven't told anyone this plan yet, so this is an exclusive. Um, I'm looking at starting a flag design. Mm -hmm. uh, I've looked at how other cities do it. I think you need a committee, and then you need to take in uh, the public designs and sort it out, narrow it down to like eight or so, and then put it to a vote community-wide to, to um, decide on a new flag design. I didn't think Merrill had a flag, 
there was one in the mayor's office when I got there. Um, it, there's a, a whole uh, field of study behind good flag design. It's called vexillology. I hope I pronounced that right. I think you did, yeah. Um, <laughs> and it, the, uh, the flag that's in the mayor's office right now breaks all of the design. Con- it's, it's bad. Mm-hmm. It's not good. Um, so we need a good flag because really we need, in order to get these things, um, like more statues, more art in the city, more walkability um, to beautify the city, we got to rally people together to get these things done. And it, we need a banner, a flag, to rally people under. Um, we, it, um, logos are super important in any company because the brand. Mm-hmm. The same thing applies to a city. We, we need a brand that makes people feel a certain way. Yeah, absolutely. And, and uh, it takes somebody you may coming in and looking at things differently sometimes to, to realize that a city is maybe lacking in some of these areas. Which is that one of the reasons that you feel you were you were able to win the election last uh, last April? Just because you've got a different point of view? I think so. I think everyone sees the potential in Merrill. Um, it, during one of the public forums between me and the previous mayor, it, the question was asked, "What's our most valuable asset?" And both of us, I think it was a no-brainer. The answer is the people. The people are the greatest asset. Um, just because of they're hard workers, they're creative, they're smart. Um, we got people moving from all, I would never believe it, little old Merrill, but we got people from all over the United States that moved to Merrill. And they bring different, different thoughts, different ideas, different experiences. We really just need to rally everyone together. And I think everyone saw that and they're looking for a way um, to express like, we see that things can be different. We need we need it to change, and I think they saw in me kind of a, a symbolic like he's new. Maybe this is uh, the outlet to mm-hmm. to get the change going. Um, and I've kind of noticed it. I think people are uh, me winning excited. The, the people that you know, maybe we're feeling down on themselves, like, oh, I, I want to do this, but I just can't do it. Well, 25-year-old won the election. If, <laughs> <laughs> I think you can do whatever you, you, you set out to do. One more thing before we let you go here, and you talked about that forum, and, and one of the questions that was brought up was the issue of marijuana, something that, obviously, it's been a divisive topic you know we're some say we're not the united states of america in regards to marijuana we're divided because we have states where it's legal states where it's not you kind of uh, explained your stance on that a little bit you want to just reiterate that for us so at the forum a question was posed about um if Mar- I, I believe is if marijuana was legalized in wisconsin would Merrill embrace it um and it, there, there was another part of the built into the question it mentioned uh, the economy and it, it, I don't know, it, this might have bit me in the butt because there's been rumors now that, like, I want to make Merrill, I think, <laughs> one email I saw, it was a sanctuary city for weed, which, I don't know. Um, I don't know where that came from. At the forum, I wanted my stance to be very firm. So uh, I went, legalize it, legalize it, legalize it. Mm-hmm. Because my opinion that... I can't do anything as mayor, but as a state, I think it's important that we legalize it because if you look at the brain drain problem, all the young people are leaving Wisconsin. They're going to Minnesota, which is decriminalized. They're going to Washington, Oregon, Colorado. All those states have something in common. They have progressive politics and recreational or decriminalized weed is one of uh, um, the big draws, I believe. Um, for our tourism industry, those people, we love when the people from Chicago come up and spend their tourist dollars in the Northwoods. Michigan is looking at, um, I believe it's this fall, they're going to vote on it, recreational marijuana. I fear that we're going to hurt if we're going to lose those tourists because they're going to go over, either just shoot east or go pass right through us up into the UP. Um, so... It, if we want to keep those tourism dollars, if we want to stop the brain drain, 
I think legalizing recreational at the state level is a must do. Um, it's gonna fix it. Our prisons are overcrowded, they're understaffed. Why are we locking up nonviolent offenders for something that doesn't kill people? It, it's just silly in my opinion. And I, I'm a very, very pro legalization at the state level. And I think I need, I needed to make that public because it, it's very hush. Um, a lot of people thought that I was shooting myself in the foot there, but I think, a, I wouldn't say majority, but there is a large portion of the population in Wisconsin that do think we should decriminalize or legalize, and they don't speak up because it's such a, we live in a conservative state. Mm -hmm. and it, it, no doubt. You don't want to start an argument. If you're <laughs> at the bar, you don't want to start preaching something that everyone's going to come down on you for. Yeah, exactly. Um, but having the platform I did when I was running a campaign, like all eyes on me, I, mm -hmm. I thought it was important to, to let people know, like, yes, it, we, I think it is a common sense thing to do. And in the future, I hope the state works towards it. And, and, and again, this is coming from somebody as you, you realize as, as mayor, there's not much that you can do at a civil level. I mean, it's no. been tried in Stevens Point in recent months and it, it ended up falling flat on its face. And you realize that as well. You know, it's, it's, you can't just do anything by yourself. You've got to have, this is something that has to come at the state level. Exactly. And it, honestly, even if I did have the power to do something, I think I'd have priorities above that you know, um, trying to tackle the, the, uh, high turnover rates at companies, um, trying to make the city more walkable and just give it a feel of, I want to be outside. I want to be in this community. Um, if it, if it reeks, reeks like weed everywhere, I, I don't <laughs> I think you're losing that. Right. You know? So, um, I think, I, I hope that Wisconsin sees that we're losing young people due to our tough stance on it. I hope Wisconsin sees we're bleeding money on our, our prison, prisons because we're locking up nonviolent offenders. I hope Wisconsin sees that we're going to lose those tourist dollars if we're one of the last states to legalize. Um, and it, it really, I, I don't think, I've heard a lot of people voice their concerns about why we shouldn't legalize. I think it's important we continue that discussion and I, I, I'd be super interested in looking at ways, a big concern is like, what's it gonna do to the kids if they see some guy on the street smoking mm -hmm. a marijuana cigarette? Like, they're gonna think, oh, that's cool, I wanna do that. Yeah. Well, maybe we should look at a system like they have in the Netherlands, in Amsterdam, where you can do it, but you have to stay in the shop. I mm -hmm. think they call them coffee, coffee shops or something. I, th like, I think so. I, th I think so. Yeah. And it just like you can't be drunk in public, it, like you can't be standing on the sidewalk with an open container. It, we can regulate it in a way that mm -hmm. you know it shields the children, and it, it doesn't have to be full legalization. It's gonna be everywhere all the time. It, you gotta. We gotta talk. Listen to both sides and talk it through, and you know, come, yeah, there's there's a middle ground that can be exactly. found. One more question before we let you go. Then, I mean, you've got obviously you've got these very well thought out opinions about marijuana. Is this coming from somebody who was a, a user at one time, or are are you still using now? Or could you get comfortable giving us your stance on that? I went to college. <laughs> <laughs> um, I didn't inhale. No, <laughs> um, I think Obama said it better. Yeah, I inhaled. That's the point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, I don't know how all the other college campuses are, but at, at my college, it seemed like a vast majority of the students were okay with it. Not everyone smoked weed, but you weren't going to be mad if you were at a party and someone in the other room was. You know? Right. It's just, I'm drinking gin. I'm not going to be mad that you're drinking whiskey sort yeah. of thing. Um, some people don't like alcohol. Marijuana gave them a different way to socialize. Um, so yeah, I 
previous user. <laughs> All right. Well, well, we'll just leave it at that then. Uh, we appreciate the time here, uh, Derek, and again, uh, all the best. We'll look forward to talking with you again in the next uh, couple of next couple of years. You got a four year term, correct? Yeah. Yep. So you've got a little job security for now. But, <laughs> yeah, a little bit. But we wish you the best with your with your agenda, and and again, we'll hope to talk to you in the future. Thanks.